just open my eyes that I may see. Lead me, oh Lord, won't you lead me? How quickly time flies by, doesn't it? I think I've heard that saying at least three times in the last week. How quickly time flies by. It's true to say it's the 19th of January today already. 19th of January, we're two, almost three, entering the third week of the new year already. And yes, as I say, I've heard it on numerous occasions, and indeed, God willing, the next time we meet, it'll be February. Three times and I'll be winning to February already. How, how quickly time flies by, doesn't it? But do you think that's bad? Somebody said it to me the other day, how quickly time flies. I said, I know, I know. I said, I said well, get ready for this. I said, what? I said, I was in, I don't like to publicise any shops here, but they were in B&M or Home Bargains, one of those shops. Do you know what I saw? I said, what did you see? I said, a sort of Valentine card. I went round the next aisle and I saw an Easter egg. <laughs> I said, and there were birthday cards as well. And that was the week before last. I said, at this rate, we'll just cut out the middleman. Happy Christmas, happy Easter, happy Valentine's Day, happy birthday. <laughs> Done, dusted, and we're away. It is, isn't it? It just seems that the year seems to go by very, very quickly, all of a sudden. And it is because of the commercial organisations. They push things so quickly. We've got Valentine's, we've got Easter, as we've said. Easter cards already. Easter eggs. And next thing you know, we'll be talking about holidays. Anybody booked a holiday yet? Anybody, get, anybody ready? Oh, OK, I won't look, I won't look. <laughs> it's good to be at the end of the game, Arthur. That's what I say. One day at a time. One day at a time. My friends, we can only be in today. We can only be here in this moment, you know? This next ten minutes, next half an hour. Already the last ten minutes of history to us. We're in this moment, we're in this day. And so to live today is the topic of our subject today. One day at a time. Sweet Jesus, that's right, John. <laughs> One day at a time. We heard in our first reading this morning, read for us by Margaret, from Exodus chapter 16, verse 1 to 4. The Israelites had just, virtually just, left Egypt. And it says that the good book is the living book. And it is indeed, because when we listen and we read this, this passage, it relates to us virtually today, right to this day, even though it was thousands of years ago. Because the Israelites, we are told, as they had left Egypt, in this passage, it was the 15th day of the second month. The 15th day, they're merely a month out of Egypt. And how do we know that? Because just as they were about to go, God said, this is a new year. This will be the new year for you. It commences from this point. So they had left Egypt but mere one month into the new year. Four weeks in. You and I, my friends, are three weeks in to our new year. It says they journeyed from Elim. Elim? Elim. E-L-I-M, however you may wish to pronounce it. They journeyed from there. They were between Elim and they were between Sinai. In the desert of sin. You and I, my friends, too, as always, are on a journey. We're in the third week of our new year on our journey for this year. Where it will take us, we do not know. Ultimately, we are heading for the promised land, as the Egyptians were. The ultimate journey, the goal, is the promised land, and we shall attain it. And we shall get there. But our journey commences each new year. So we heard... They're commencing their journey. They have provisions for one month. This is what we're led to believe. One month and the food is gone now. And the, they begin to complain. They complain to Moses. We have no food. We heard them say. We are starving. We have no food. What shall we do? And like a lot of us do. They started to hanker back. Think back. To a time before. They start to complain. Why has God brought us out of Egypt? We had food there. Okay, we're in bondage, we're in fetters, but we had food. Now look, we brought out, we have nothing. 
We do the same ourselves, don't we? Today might be a good day, might be a bad day. And we might complain about today, but we don't know what tomorrow holds. And sometimes it can be worse. And we think back, I wish I'd been back two weeks ago. I wish I'd been back a month ago. This is what the Israelites were doing. They were complaining, I wish I'd been back a month ago. But God heard them. As he hears us each time. He heard them. And what did he do? He provided for them. He heard their calls and he knew their needs. We are told, verse 4, God said, I will provide for you food from heaven. To all the come, go out and collect your quota. He said, I will provide food from heaven. He knew their needs and told he would provide for them. Each man was to gather as much as they required, individually for their tent. We all have different needs in our life today. Not everybody's the same. We don't need all the same things from God today. But he knows our needs and he says, your quota is available. There was no limit to them. They could take as much as they wanted. We too are offered, today and every day, as much bread from heaven as we want. We're offered it. We're asked to take it. The bread of heaven that, they, that the Israelites know, as we know, was manna from heaven. It was those little crust-like flakes that we were told that were on, like dew on the top of, as I thought about this morning as we were coming through the dew type day. The types of flakes. And God said to them, go out, collect as much as you like. They would collect them and we led to believe, broken them up into grains and a sort of a honey type consistency. And they fed them. They were there. What is our bread of heaven? Well, I don't need to ask you. You know. Our bread of heaven is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our bread. He told us himself in John chapter 3. Jesus said, The bread of God is he who comes down from heaven to give life to the world. And when asked by the disciples, Where can you give us this bread? Jesus then said, I am the bread of life. Jesus Christ is our bread of life. Feeds us every day. We can take as much as we want and fill ourselves that we require for our needs. He sustains us. Provides us with energy from his word, from his teachings. We take him in. He feeds us. And God knows that's what we require. Well, my friends, I don't want you to speak about the quantity today. It's not the quantity because it's there as much as you like. Take a spoonful, take a shovelful of the bread of heaven. It's there for you. It's not the quantity. But today, the important aspect of our subject is the frequency. The frequency. How often can you take it? How often did God say to the Israelites, through Moses, he said, take your quota... But the important aspect that he said, every day. Take your quota that you need every day. Take your quota every day so that I will, I will test that they will abide by my words. What was the test of God at this point? God was testing because he said to Moses later, take as much as you want every day, but use it that day. The Israelites were told to use it, not keep any till the next day. Whatever they caught, brought, gathered that day, use it. The objective was to determine whether they trusted in God. Would they trust that God would provide the manna the next day? Did they believe that he would provide the next day, tomorrow, for them? As some kept, some kept it. And you can understand their thinking, they're starving, they're hungry. I better just keep this. I just don't know. Will it be there tomorrow? Moses said he was, he was angry about it. And it was decayed and it was rotten in the end. They couldn't eat it. But God provided the next day. It was there. The manna was there. The test was would they trust in God to provide the next day? 
He had given us today what we needed. Did they trust he would give tomorrow? And he did. And this is why Jesus again from Matthew chapter 6, 34 states, and we all know this quote. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry for itself. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. For Jesus meant he, we know, God holds it in his hands. Do we trust that God will provide tomorrow? He's provided for us today. Will he provide for tomorrow? Now, when I mentioned, because some of my friends say, well, what's your, what's your, what's your sermon this week, Lee? And I said, it's one day at a time. So, oh, yes, well, that's, that's good, you know. So it's, can we really live like that, though? Can we really just live one day at a time? Is it realistic to suggest that we can do that? It's difficult, my friends. We know this. We may have a worry. We may have a concern. You can't get it off your mind. And here I am saying, live one day at a time, one day at a time. It's difficult, but it can be done. And again, as always, from the good book tells us how. Jesus' brother James, in his letter, writes and tells us, as we heard. James, chapter 5, verse 1 to 10. Verse 5, straight away, first things out of his mouth, he wrote, Be patient, brethren. Be patient. He gives us the example, doesn't he? Of the farmer. That's true, isn't it? We don't extend... Those who have gardens, I don't have a garden. I have a little plant pot (laughs) on the balcony and it grows once in a a blue moon. But those, I presume, have a lot of gardens. And you'll you'll love your gardens and you'll plant your seeds. Be honest, my friends. Do you plant your seed and expect it to be grown the next day? Do you expect to see a blooming flower the next day? You don't, do you? You'll plant your seeds, as James suggests. You'll plant your seeds and you know you'll trust in God and nature and his creation that he will feed them each day. He will sustain them each day. And ultimately, they will grow and bloom. And hereby, James is urging us, be patient like the farmer. Over this next year that's approaching, when we have our difficulties and our troubles, which we will. He urges, be patient. God will provide each day. He takes as an example, he says, take the prophets, seen and heard. What do we see? Well, first we've heard of Job. Patience of Job. Is it real that Job had patience, though? When you think about Job, really, was he really patient? It may be said, and it has been suggested, that Job was impatient he had his difficulties we know he was an uprighteous man we know that these difficulties were placed upon him but he was impatient to know as to why was he in this position and undoubtedly my friends you and I as believers in God and Christ at times when we've been faced with difficult periods of our life we think we're doing our best why So it wasn't necessarily the patience of Job, but rather the perseverance of Job. The endurance of Job. Job trusted in God. He ultimately trusted that God, in his wisdom, knew what he was doing. And Job endured. If we've heard about Job, we've also seen examples of the same thing. Our own lives. We've seen how we can trust in God. My friends, today, I presume you will leave here this afternoon and you will go and enjoy some time a Sunday dinner, a Sunday lunch, food you will enjoy. We've discussed this before. You will go home to your shelters, your homes, your warm beds. Did you have food yesterday? You did. Did you have food the day before? You did. A home, a shelter, you did, you did, you did. You've seen how God provides for you. 
Why wouldn't he provide tomorrow the same? You've had your prayers. You've offered your prayers every day, I presume, for a multitude of years. Have you had your prayers answered? I have. Not immediately. Not straight away. Sometimes they are. Sometimes the next day. But sometimes I'm still waiting for some. Waiting. But I know that God's answered me before. Why shouldn't he answer me again? Am I to jump the queue? No. So we see from the past that God has answered us. We know today he's providing for us. So why would he not provide tomorrow? One day at a time, my friends, is the way to approach these matters. For we cannot live but in the moment we live in. And it's not just in the bad times, but it's in the good times too, I suggest. The good times too, the happy times, the times when you're planning for your holidays, you're planning for the future. The younger people are planning careers, and they're rushing ahead. The shops are rushing ahead. And what happens when we rush ahead? When you're on a train, my friend, what happens? Do you see all the journey? You don't, do you? Fudum, fudum, fudum. We're flying by. And what happens when we fly by? We miss a lot of things. We miss a lot of the beautiful things in life. When we're jumping ahead thinking of tomorrow and the next day and the next day, we're forgetting what God's providing for us today. We're forgetting everything that we have to be thankful for today. The love of a loved one. The faithfulness of a friend. The kind word of a stranger who asks you to pray for him for no reason. When we rush ahead in our lives, as we are, we're busy. We're rushing ahead, rushing ahead, rushing ahead. What about today? What about today? Let's just stop for a moment and take the opportunity to look what God is offering us today. One day at a time. One day at a time. When we take life one day at a time, my friends, we see... As James said, that our God is a loving and compassionate God. He told us he has a plan for us. Jeremiah 29, forgive me if it's wrong. I have a plan for you, said God. Not for your harm, but for your good. He holds us in his hands each day. Each and every day. He told the Israelites there would be food. And there was food. Jesus said do not worry about tomorrow. Because tomorrow will worry for itself. And when we don't rush through life. We can enjoy it. We can be thankful and grateful for everything we have. Just think of one thing today my friends. What you have to be grateful for. I know that within the congregation today. There are troubles. There are strifes. Just take a moment just to think what we have that we can be grateful to God for. And in our prayers, if it is this evening that we've seen in difficulty and strife, let us pray to God again and he will answer. Pray that he will give us the strength to take and endure life one day at a time. May God bless you today. Amen. Amen.